Okay, so we're working on resolving circuits, uh, resistors in parallel and series, or in this case, a little bit of everything. So I've provided you with this circuit. You can thank me later. I've also, on a couple pages down the way, I've done the same circuit, well, much larger. The reason I've done this is I, I find it very helpful to write information about each resistor as I go along, and I, I need some space to do that. And in general, the theme here is take your time and use, look, the, this tree, the whatever tree, whatever ponderosa pine or whatever that gave its life for this piece of paper is long dead. So let's honor its memory by using as much of this paper as we can, because we need a plan. See, what we're gonna do is we're going to take our time and we're only going to resolve a part of this circuit at a time. So for example, when I look at this, I really see the overall structure is parallel. I got a couple in series here, but the, they're part of a larger structure, which is parallel. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to, my plan at this point is to combine these two first. In fact, I'm not no numbers. The numbers can get overwhelming first. So I'm going to combine these two first. In other words, I'm going to create a, a kind of an in-between circuit here. I'm going to create a circuit that looks like this. R5 isn't going to change. R4 isn't going to change yet. R3 is not going to change yet. But when I'm done this first step, these two are now going to be one resistor. Now, I don't know if various, you know, Salcon or various textbooks, what their notation is exactly. Uh, I'll tell you what I like doing to help me keep track of this. I'll take this resistor that I just created it's really a combination of these two. So I usually write that it's R and then I go like one slash two, the combination of one and two. So this is my first step. I'll get, we'll get back to how we're gonna do that in a second, but what's, what would be my next step, do you think? If you were doing this problem, what would you combine next? And if you're thinking, well, these two, you're probably right. So if I can get these two combined, it would look like, I'm about to slide down here. All right, so if I combine those two at the top, then I'm gonna have a circuit that looks like this. Those two combined, and then R3, and then this R1 slash two that I just made. So now I would have this one, which I would call R4 slash five, the combination of those two. Remember combination can mean different things depending on whether they're in series or parallel. This one, R3, and this is the combination of one and two. And now I've boiled it down to three resistors in parallel. And I can combine three resistors in parallel in one step. I'm gonna have to go to another page. Well, actually, I could just do it. I'll sketch it real quick right here. So, and if I, when I combine those into one equivalent resistor, that will be the resistance for the circuit. And we call that, fin that final resistor R equivalent, EQ. So I would, I would map out, if I was you, I would map out a plan. I would take my original, figure out what I want to do first, 
what I want to do second, third, and so on, before I even put any numbers in. Now, as you're going to see in a little bit, this is going to be important. So my students are staging a walkout as we speak. It's, is there some sort of protest going on that I'm not aware of? Or is it just the blood drive? Or is it, oh, honor roll students? Oh, I didn't think I had any in here. All right, never mind. All right. <laughs> All right. What is it, like ice cream or something? You're leaving education for like ice cream? No, it's worth it for the ice cream. Oh, please. Just shaking my head. I'd rather be dumb, but eat ice cream. This is America, by the way. That's pretty much America right, right there. We're stupid, but boy, do we like ice cream. Um, anyway, that's beside the point. This is all on screencast. I digress. So after we've established a plan, now we can go ahead. To the, one of the importance of things about this is we're going to need to work this in reverse to find things out. So having this map of how we got to different places is going to be very important. So let's throw some resistances and voltages in here. Um, let's go making up numbers. 10 volts. Let's go some relatively simple numbers for the resistance. Is um, Let's go 5 ohms. Um, R2, we will make... 7 ohms. Let's make uh, R3 15 ohms. R4 9 ohms. And uh, let's make R5 just 3 ohms. So we'll use those numbers. For this example. Now we're going to take our time because now we know those. Well, our first, the first thing we did was combine R1 and R2. They're in series. So if you recall, when we add them in series, when we combine them in series, we literally just add the resistances. So off to the side here, what I like to write is how I got this. So R1 slash 2 is equal to just R1 plus R2. Now, in this case, it's pretty straightforward. That's going to be 5 plus 7. R1 slash 2 is 5 plus 7 ohms, which is 12 ohms. You can write that next to it if you like, if it helps to remember what it is. But either way, straightforward. And you're like, well, couldn't I have just done that and the parallel branch at the same time? And I'm telling you, you you're gonna, when you see how we have to work back, you're going to only want to do one step at a time. Generally, it's, it's better, better to do that. Yes? So what I want you thinking about now is our next step was to combine resistors 4 and 5. They are in parallel. So how are we going to go about combining those? They are these these are parallel. So if I'm going to combine them, I've got to do well, let's do it like right in here. So since they're parallel, I have the 1 over 4 5, their combination is equal to 1 over resistance 4 plus 1 over resistance 5. Now this is where using a calculator for me just makes my life so much easier. That means that equals 1 over, what was 4? 9 ohms plus 1 over 3 ohms. So, uh, it, it, there's a common denominator there, and you could do it that way. Um, 
let's say there aren't nice, easy, easy common denominators. I'm not sure you can see my calculator, but all I'm going to do is uh, I just literally just type what I see here. 1 divided by 9 plus 1 divided by 3. Get an answer, but that is not my actual answer. Let me just write down what I have. Let me get rid of this so I have some space. What I have is 1 over their combination. Is on my calculator, it says 0 0.4444444. So what I need to do is to take the reciprocal of that because this is 0.44 is equal to 1 over the number I want. So if I hit my 1 over key or my x to the negative 1 key, that flips it and I get 2.25. So the equivalent resistance between 4 and 5 is 2.25 ohms. So when I combine 4 and 5, I get 2.25 ohms. A, a quick note about resistors in parallel. When you add resistors in parallel, or when you combine them, I should say, well, I shouldn't say add, the nature of that 1 over formula is that your answer will always be less than your smallest number coming in. Like if you get, an, if I, I know I'll do it wrong if I get an answer that's bigger than three, uh, your answer will always come out to be less than your smallest. So 2.25 from that regard makes sense. So I have 2.25. I got resistor three, which is 15 ohms. And I have the combination of resistors 1 and 2, which is 12 ohms. I have those three in parallel. And I'm not going to try to cram this into a margin or something. So we're going to take that over to the other, other side of the page here. And I'm going to combine those three in parallel. But I will jot it down here, I guess, just to... So what I'm going to do on the back of this is I'm going to, to find the equivalent resistance for the whole circuit. I'm going to take those three in parallel, one over resistor, what I call resistor four slash five, plus one over resistor three, plus one over resistor one slash two. Combine, you know, do the one overs, combine all that, and then get, take that number and then flip it upside down to get the actual equivalent for the resistance. So on the back. So my equivalent resistance, one over that I should say, is going to be one over 2.25 ohms plus one over 15, I think it was, plus one over 12. And this is what I mean, like you could do one over, th the one we did before, one over three plus one over nine, you can get a common denominator and all that, no big deal, but this just seems to me just easier to do it on the calculator. Um, if you literally just type 1 divided by 2.25 plus 1 divided by 15 plus 1 divided by 12, you will get 0 0.59444, but that's not our answer. I write this step on purpose because it's, it's easy to think, oh, I'm done, I hit equals, I got a number. No, you're not done yet. That's one over the number you want, this quantity you want. So if I use my key that looks like that, for some of you it looks like x to the negative one, and I flip that right side up, or upside down, or I guess right side up, I'll get 1.68. Does that make sense? Based on what I mentioned earlier, it should be smaller than my smallest resistance coming in. And that makes sense. And you're like, oh, we're done. No, we're not. Not even close. Um, I mean, say we're about halfway.
because we've got the equivalent resistance for the whole circuit. So that's great and all. And if we are the last page or down the line here, we can write it down. We said there was what, 10, was it 10 volts I said? I can't remember. The equivalent resistance is 1.68 ohms. I said 10 volts, right? Yep. Okay. So I'm looking at, I drew this on the other page. I'll just bring it up here. So I'm looking at this now. I have this simple circuit. It's got 10 volts here. It's got one equivalent resistance, which is 1.68 ohms. I now have something simple enough that I can just apply Ohm's law to it. So I can find the current going through this imaginary. I know it's imaginary. It's kind of this all boiled down. But I can find the current through this circuit, what I'm going to call what we call the current through the battery or through this, the, the voltage. So the current that is flowing through this circuit, but more specifically through here. That current through the battery is going to be what? Well, Ohm's law says that current is equal to delta V over resistance, right? So it's going to be 10 divided by 1.68. Uh, 5.94. So current going through the circuit here is 5.94. How does that compare to say this, when we go back a level, that current 5.94, that's the current going through the battery here. But when that current gets to a, a branch here, some of it's got to go one way and some's going to go the other. So the current in each of these branches isn't going to be 5.94, it's going to split. Their total current will be, but the current's going to split. Okay, so in order to work our way backwards and find out the various information about each of these, let me go to the big drawing, because this is where the big drawing for me helps. I know delta V is 10 volts. I know the current for the circuit going through the battery is 1.68 ohm, uh, amps, I should say. Now, when I go back a level, jumping around here, sorry. Here's the big rule. If you weren't paying attention before, pay attention now. How did I get from, this is the one I created, what was it before? Was it a series or parallel? If you look back, it was a parallel. That's important to note. Here's, I'm going to write this on its own piece of paper. Here's what you want to keep in mind. If you're going from some combination resistor, and you're, the, it came from a parallel What stays the same? This is what you want to remember. This is the memorization part. What stays the same? And we just showed you, by the way, that it can't be the current because the current's going to split between them. But what is, what is the same across parallel branches? Cool? No, I don't care. Is it cool? Okay, never mind. Sorry. There it is. There you go. Delta V is the same, right? For those of you watching the video, my apologies. So, if you go from equivalent resist, some resistor that you combine to make, when you go back, and if you, if you got that by combining in parallel, the voltages are going to be the same. If, instead, you had some resistor that you got, and when you look back to where it came from, they were in series, two, three of them, whatever, what's the same between them? It isn't the voltage. They're going to different voltage drops. As you go back and it was series, the current was the same. So, 
Here's what I mean by that in application. Take a look at this circuit right here that I drew in the corner. I've got a current, I've got a voltage for that circuit, and I have a resistance. Of the voltage and the current, which one can I carry back to this one? All right, since it's going back to a parallel, I can bring the voltage. I now know delta V for each of these resistors, which is why I need a bigger circuit, but that's all right, we got this, we got this. So I know delta V across one, two, I know delta V across resistor three, and I know delta V across resistor four slash five. I know each of their voltages now. It is 10 volts. They all have the same voltage as the circuit that was before. If I go back to a series branch, what's the same? All right, the current is, right? But if I go back to parallel, like this, the voltage is the same. Well, wait a second. Let me zoom in real close on one of these. No, 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 no. All right. Well, wait a second. I, I know the voltage now for each of these. I know the resistance for each of those. I can apply Ohm's law to each one to find the current. So in other words, the current through one Sorry, but through four slash five. This one here is going to be 10 volts divided by the resistance 2.25. That's four, right? He says, making sure everybody's up oh, 4.4, right? 2.25? Oh, yeah, not 2.5 would be it. So this current through this one, through uh, four or five, is 4.4 .4 amps. What's the current through this one? Well, it's going to be 10 divided by 15. 0.67. Current through resistor 3 is going to be 0.67 amps. And what about the current through resistor 1 slash 2? Point eight three. Now, what do you get when you take roughly 4.4? .4, what do you think you get when you add 4.4 .4 to 0 0.67 to 0 0.83? I get about 5.9. What was my current, right, through the battery? So the current through the battery was 5.9. It splits, but when it comes back, it's still got to be 5.9. So these three should add up to be the current through the battery. We can always check our work there. But each one's going to have different current. Which, which one of the branches got the most current? Well, it should come as no surprise, in a way, if you think about it, that the, current, the branch that got the most current had the least resistance, didn't it? If you ever hear the phrase, path of least resistance, it's a thing. This path is going to get most of the current because it's the easiest path. The 15 gets the least because it has the most difficult run. And so there, it, it's, you can always check to see if things make sense that way. All right. So... Going back to the next circuit. This is why I only do one step at a time. Where did I go back? This is four or five got combined, right? So when I go back, am I going back to a parallel or to a series? I'm going back to a parallel again, right? All right, so what do I know stays the same? Voltage. So what, what I mean by that is, is if you look at their combination, here's all the information I know about, their, about the combination of these two. 
The one thing that I can definitely take back, other than the resistances, these two, I, well, I know that from before, but the one thing I can take from here to here, since they're in parallel, is their voltage. I know that the delta V across 5 is 10 volts, and the delta V across 4 is 10 volts. These two didn't change going from here to here, so I'm not worried about those. I'm just going to bring over their information that stays. But I can find the current through each of these, can I? And that current should add up to be what was going through them, their combination here, 4.4, but we'll get to that. So if I know the resistance of 5, which is... 3 ohms. So for this branch up here, I know the resistance is 3. I know the voltage is 10. I can find the current. That's going to be voltage divided by resistance. So 10 divided by 3 is 3.3 ohms. I'm oh, sorry, amps. So I5 is 3.3 .3 amps. What about the current through 4? That's going to be 10 volts divided by the resistance of 4, which is 9. It's 10 divided by 9, and that's going to be a current of 1.1. So I4 is 1.1 amps, and they add up to 4.4, which is what I expected based on what was going through their combination here. Last step. Reversing this. I combined one and two. They were combined in series. So, what stays the same? So going from here now to here, since I'm going back to a series, the thing that stays the same isn't voltage like it is in parallel, it's current. So now I know the current, I can even zoom this in now, I know the current through 1 and the current through 2. How do I know it? I know the current, I guess I have to go all the way back here, I know the current through their combination was 0.83. Which, by the way, if I was really being thorough, I should have written here just to make sure it was in that step and written three here as well. But So the, their current is both 0.83. That's the thing that stays the same for a series, is the current. But I know their resistances, R2 is 7 and R1 is 5. I can use Ohm's Law now to find the voltage drop across each. So what would the voltage drop be? Well, volt, Ohm's Law says voltage is I times R. So it's 0 0.83 times 5. So the delta V here, 1, is 4.15 volts. And for 2, it's going to be 0 0.83 times 7. 5 point delta V2 is 5.5. 81 volts. Just check real quick. What, what's 4.15 plus 5.81 roughly? Basically 10, right? Close to 10. Does that make sense? All right, that was the that was their voltage drop here. The two combined should the voltage drops four point something here and then the rest here to get down to 10 to drop that 10. So you can always check yourself as you go back. If two quantities aren't the same, so voltage isn't the same going back in a series, but you should be able to add them up to get it what it was before. And now, I have scribbled all over this page everything that I would need to fill out this garbage. So, for example, for resistor 1, let's see if I can remember it without having to flip back, flip back and forth. It was 5 ohms. Its voltage drop was, I think, 4.15 
volts and its current was 0.83 amps. How would I find the power dissipated in that one? Well, there's any number of ways. There's three different formulas you could use, but the one on your equation seat, I think, just says I times V, doesn't it? So I could do power. One way to look at power is I times V. I could multiply those two. I could do I squared times R. I could do V squared over R. They should all be the same number. 4.15 times 0.83. 3.4. What's the unit power? What's the unit? What's the unit again? What's? It's the watts. All right. And you could do the same thing for this one. I think it was, and this is all from memory, so forgive me if I'm wrong, but seven, and then it was like 5.8 something. 5.8, so I'm gonna call 5.85. That would make it 10, so we'll go with that. Volts, the current was 0.83, and I could find its power, and I would do the same for the others. The current through the battery was 5.9-ish, if I remember. Sorry, you can't see that. It's 5.9. The total power would just be 10, the voltage. I got this. There we go. The total power in the circuit would be the voltage for the circuit times the current through the battery. So that's going to be 59 watts. And you can do the same thing for each individual resistor going through. Just go to your diagram to write down what you know. I do not remember them. I could flip back and forth, but who needs to see that? This has already gone on too long. All right. So, biggest thing, keep this in mind. When combine them to get your equivalent resistance. As you work your way backward, if you go from some combination and you look back to see where it, where it came from, if it came from a parallel branch, everybody's got whatever voltage was here. If it came from a series branch, all those resistors will have the current that we had over here. That's what stays the same. And that's how you work your way backwards. And then just use Ohm's law until you're tired of it.